Well, mailbag time. Got a few things here. I think that's a steering wheel. We'll find out what that is soon. Don't forget the links down below for any items I can give you links for, so make sure you check those out. Look in the description. I'll explain what these are. Get one out. So these are little chassis mounted LED holders, I suppose. So if you've got something you want to make waterproof maybe, or LEDs mounted on a circuit board, and you want to have show those through a casing, you can mount these in the casing. And you can get these different sizes, but these are the ones I've particularly got. There's these ones here. What size are these? 6mm? 8mm? I don't remember. I actually might have to look. And you can just drill a hole, push it through the hole, and that will then sit in it, and then you can see the LED through it, and it will shine through. So I've got a bunch of these, because these are used on an item which I do repairs on. I thought I'd get some of these, because these are cheap. These are not cost much at all. And these do fail, and get broken and damaged and scratched and stuff like that, so... I've got some more. And to answer a question about dimensions, they are 6.2 on the outside. The OD of the hole it has to be into. The fascia, 7mm. I believe these are for 5mm LEDs, so there you go, 5mm inside. I put one. And length, inclusive, is 11mm. And once you've actually got through, like a bit, bit through the panel there, let's go the, the panel thickness. The most panel thickness you can have is, so about 6.5 panel thickness. There you go. Hope that answers all your questions. This package had a little bit of a hard trip. It's a little bit beaten up. There's more batteries. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I wasn't quite expecting to be packaged like that. Anyway, these are LAR 2032s. So these are rechargeable batteries, 3.6 volt. So you can use these instead of the standard CR2032s and you can recharge them. Now I actually did show previously some other ones of these which came packaged differently and also a charger which allows you to use these. Now I don't know which channel I saw the video on of someone using these things with the charger. It might have been Julian Elette or it could have been Big Clive. I can't remember which one of those two it was. But someone actually had these things or at least a version of these, like a rechargeable lithium battery for these little coin cells, and I thought well, that's a good idea. Why didn't I start doing that a long time ago? Because I use a fair few of these. Anyway, and now I've got um, quite a few. So I suppose a sensible thing to do would actually be to look at these things and see what the voltage is sitting at, because being lithium cells, they don't like to go too flat. So let's see what we've been delivered in case we've got a whole bunch of dead batteries. 4.1 volts, oh, that's fine. Another one, 4.1, yeah, these are good. These are fine. Another one, 4.1. These are all fully charged, brilliant. No worries there. Links down below for these things. All right, this is just a lightning cable. Well, not lightning, is it? Well, it is lightning, I suppose. So this is a Thunderbolt cable. So you've got Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3, or USB-C, depending on how you want to interpret that. And this is just a, uh, a data which you can go from USB-C to Thunderbolt 2. Now the reason being, as I've mentioned multiple times in other videos, at least in other mailbag videos anyway, I've upgraded my computer to a Mac Pro 2013. Well, it's kind of an upgrade. To be honest, I've been a bit disappointed in it. The Mac Pro 2010 I was using was actually better in many ways than the 2013 model, as I've been finding. I mean, the 2013 has got much faster drive access because it's using a different kind of drive. But that's you know really quick and it's got a fast bus and that sort of stuff. And when it's just doing a single processor type task, it's quick, but as soon as you start doing multiple tasks, it crawls. Whereas the 2010, you wouldn't even notice. I could be doing a video edit in one side, and I could go and browse my email, or go and watch a video on YouTube, or all these things all together at once, and it wouldn't slow down at all. You wouldn't even know it's doing anything in the background. It didn't bother it. But I did it on 2013, not quite so good. Anyway, this is for that, because it doesn't have enough USB ports. But it does have lots of Thunderbolt ports. I'm trying to do Thunderbolt to USB-C to then go to USB-A. A lot of messing around. You can't provide power from this direction that way. It has to come from this way to the actual adapter because there's some electronics inside here. So it has to be a powered USB-C port which is going to a hub obviously, a powered USB-C hub and then this will just be a Thunderbolt cable going to a computer which then means I can expand it all. So I've already got one of these. I've now got another one. So I've got two. You always need a spare. As you know, you always need a spare. Now I've got a spare.
Okay, cool. So these are the parallel screens. So you can see it's got a parallel interface on the left-hand side here, 16 pin. Two of the pins are usually backlight, so it's usually the top two pins. There, go to the backlight. Standard interface, nothing special, really common. And these are used in some equipment which I repair. I can get them directly from them, the exact ones I use. But they look a lot like this. And I can get these fractionally cheaper. So I thought I'd get a couple of them to see how they go. In case these are suitable. I, mean, I know this generic format I can chuck on a device and they do work. The main thing is about how they look without any backlights because the circuits he's running don't have a backlight. These have backlights on them, but they don't run with one. The question is really how do they look in daylight without a backlight. Anyway, I've got two of them. I'll give them a try out. And if they're good, I'll get some more later on. Well, here's a clue straight away. Do you know what's coming just by seeing one of these packs? It is a screen. Now this is for a Samsung A12. I got this one locally instead of from China because I need it more urgently because I have the phone sitting right here. Now I actually did a video on this repair before and apparently about four days after I gave this phone back to him, he dropped it and broke the screen again. <laughs> and he's been putting it up ever since and it's been getting worse and worse and it's, I think he dropped it again and now it's basically died, you can't turn the phone off and that sort of stuff. So I think the battery's probably gone flat by now. Now I've got a screen to put on this to replace this, so I'll give this back to him. Don't think I've still got this steamroll shaped package in the background here. Sure, I'll do that one yet. I'll do that one last. What's in here? Has some LEDs. Well, these are infrared LEDs. These are ones which I use for doing repairs. Now, I'm not going to show you exactly what's in here because I don't want to unwrap it. But I'll probably give you a peek. Here we go. LCD screens. Quite large ones. These are the ones I use for doing repairs. I've had quite a few items recently which use these screens where these screens have been bad or needed to be replaced. I think there's been like three of them recently, something like that. And I only had five. I think I've got one screen left now. So I thought, right, I better get some more. So I've got another ten. This should last me a couple of years, I think. <laughs> you would have seen me videos of me doing these repairs. So the, the farm tech equipment, the timers, that is for those. The big time displays they have on them. Where I've, I've done some videos showing me replacing those in the past. So if you're interested in seeing me do those repairs, then check out the Farm Tech video series in the playlist. So these LEDs here, these infrared LEDs, like I said, call them laser module solutions. So these are used for repairs I do, and I have to replace these units sometimes. I've done videos about these too. Again, it's the Farm Tech stuff. I think I've shown a video doing those. Yeah, I have. It's because they get pushed quite hard, they can fail. If you get ones which are a bit on the borderline for the spec, they may not survive. They need to replace them time to time, and so here's some. Right, I think I know what this is, and no, it's not a steering wheel, even though it's about the right size. It crossed my mind multiple times to get one of these. It's a Rickle player. No, it's not. It's a lot noisier than I thought it was going to be. Hmm. Basically, it's a Lazy Susan, and I was thinking I could get this when I'm doing videos and all that. I've actually put things on them, you know, like my blown capacitor collection. And, you know, you could have a, a nice close look. You know, you could do some kind of arty shot like this. You know, spinning. You know, spinning. That was the idea, but it's awfully noisy. It doesn't roll very well. It seems it's got bearings in it. Hmm. It's not quite as good as I was thinking it was going to be. You know, you get something like this, which I intend to do a video about one day, so I sit on my desk. This beastie here, you can do some of that and have a look at all that instead of me having it in my hands and spinning it around. That was the idea, but it's awfully noisy. I wonder if my wife wants a lazy Susan for some reason. Hmm. Patreon supporting over there if you want to help me to buy things for mailbag to do videos about and mainly to do test gear. I like to buy broken test gear and fix it and do videos about it. And that's what I really like to do. And having the Patreon supporters and YouTube members and things like that, they all help. Even purchasing my merch, although that doesn't seem to sell very well because it is quite expensive to be honest. But the suppliers are the suppliers cost. I'm making a few dollars in each item, but anyway. Yeah, so I can get things like that and help go towards the channel. It gives me a chance then to buy more broken test gear to do videos about. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to buy 40 equipment and repair it on video. That's what I really enjoy doing is sitting there tinkering with a piece of electronics and fixing it and getting it working again or refurbishing it, whatever it may be. 
to give it another 10 or 20 years of life. That's what I like to do. I really enjoy that. I get a lot of satisfaction from it and hopefully my videos you know, convey that too when I'm working on bits of gear. If other people have got the same piece of equipment, there's a chance that they've got the same problem. It happens, especially on like CB radios. I've mentioned this before. A CB radio often had the same fault over and over and over again. Different, you know, obviously different radios, but the same model will have the same faults. The same sort of thing can happen with test gear as well. You can see the same faults manifest across different units. And hopefully me doing repairs on these things will help someone out. YouTube's expensive. Believe it or not, it cost me a lot of money to run this YouTube channel because of all the test gear I buy. It's not exactly cheap. And the main thing is actually the postage costs are horrendous, especially now. When I first started doing this channel, I could buy a piece of test gear for two or three hundred dollars. I could do a video about it, that'd be right. I'm still losing money on it. I might make five dollars on the video, right? I don't make much money off this stuff. It was doable, you know, it's a nice hobby, two or three hundred bucks, that's alright, you know. But now it's sort of a thousand dollars a time or more. Sometimes I'm paying more in postage than I'm paying for the item itself, to give you some idea. That's enough waffling. Just go over there and check the videos down below and the description stuff there for links to the things I've shown you. I'll catch you later.